Alrighty, so um, this is a What's Up Wednesday class. And I want to, What's Up Wednesday class, for those of you who have been around for a long time, I used to do, a, put up a YouTube video every Wednesday with a different technique or an album or some sort of quick project because, well, back in those days, they had to be quick projects because we had 10 minutes to do our videos. We didn't have things like YouTube Live, which is what I'm using to do this video. For those of you who are watching this on my YouTube channel, this was recorded um, live on YouTube Live. Typically my videos from my, my live streaming classes are just over on my website at lauradenisondesigns.com. But I decided with a What's Up Wednesday, I'm going to go ahead and put this up on my YouTube channel as well. Um, with this one, I'm kind of going back to some of my early roots. And in my early days on YouTube, I did a lot of envelope albums. Um, you can go back on my channel and go back to 2009 and 2010 um, when I did a lot of, of stuff with envelopes. So with this one, we're just going to do something real simple. I'm using the, these envelopes are hold um, five by seven cards. So they're like five and a quarter by seven and a quarter envelopes. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to use the cream, I have cream and dark brown, so I don't know which of them I'm going to use, or maybe I'll do, you know, alternate them. Um, now this little book that I've done here just uses four envelopes. Um, so it gives you four pockets and we're going to put flaps on them. And then there's also a large tag in between so it will actual in actuality using the four envelopes it will hold a lot the one we're going to do in class today I'm actually going to double the number of envelopes and we will have um, uh, it'll have the two end pieces and then it'll have let's see one two figure this all out I think it'll have three to six so if it goes one, two, three, four. So that's where. Yeah. So we'll have three little, um, three kind of little pages in there. So by twice as many envelopes, we get three times as much space. So we'll have three of these little pages. Um, instead of being just half inch wide, it's going to be one inch wide. Um, and so it's just a real quick, super simple. We'll have it done um, during the length of this this class today. So for this one, you will need, as I said, you can use any size envelopes. You just adjust the height of your cover and the size of the tags that go in it. Any size envelope you can use. For that matter, you could use scrap junk envelopes from your junk mail, that sort of thing. You can, well, be a little bit more challenging to mix them. You'd need at least pairs, three pairs plus two extraneous envelopes. Um, but <coughs> so they can be tall and skinny, they can be square, they can be short. You can make it into a small one, a large one. You could even use, you know, really big envelopes if you wanted to do that. Or you could also make envelopes of any size. I like using envelopes because they're quick and easy. But if you want to make your own envelopes using um, the envelope punch board or whatever the method you want to use to make envelopes, you absolutely can. Um, the ones that I'm using have square flaps on them, but you could also use the ones with the triangular flaps. Um, and my dog got left outside, so let me let her in. The joys of doing my live shows. What are you doing out there? Come on. Come on. I'm not going to do it in great big baby nature. There you go. If it's not a kid, it's a pet that interrupts. But anyway, um, so you're going to need, if you were doing this, this size one, you'd need four envelopes and we're going to need eight. And I actually think I am going to go ahead and use, I have some dark envelopes, some dark brown. So I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to need eight envelopes. You're going to need cardstock to make, um, both your, your binding to attach things together, as well as you're going to need some cardstock for the tags, or you can also use some pre-made tags. 
So envelope, pre-made tags or cardstock for the tags, plus cardstock for your binding. Now with this one I have it with some black strips for um, my binding. With this one I also made my pockets on the side. With the one I'm going to make now, I'm going to make my pockets feed from the top using, potentially using some of these taller ones. So <coughs> either way, when I assemble it, I can talk you through. It's a matter of whether you glue it in a U-shape this way or you glue it in a U-shape so that it's a vertical pocket. Super easy to modify to what your needs are. So, and then uh, as well, you need a sheet. I'm using a 12 by 12 sheet of, of um, lightweight chipboard. If you're making it a little bit large, actually I needed to bring up, I needed to do it out of eight and a half by 11. I have to look and see if I have some here. I'm sure I must, I must, I must, I must. If I don't, I have two sheets of of um, the, the uh, no, that's not it. Hang on. Oh, I was gonna be all absolutely ready. Needless to say, that didn't fly. Well, here's one sheet. It's gotta be two sheets. Come on. Cooperate with me, world. All right. Well, I can do it out of the twelve by twelve and an eight and a half by eleven. Um, but you'll need, if you're making it the size, depending on the size, you'll need one to two sheets of lightweight chipboard. I'm going to do it with two sheets because I, so I can show you how to hook it together. If you make it a small enough, this one, I was able to do it out of one sheet because I only had a half inch spine with, um, this one, I'm going to have a one inch spine. So I'll need more than, <coughs> excuse me, the single sheet. So then, um, you need some pattern paper. I am happen to be using one of my uh, digital papers. Let me turn some light on here. I'm using one of my digital papers. This one is called Enchanted. And this one has 24 eight by 10 sheets and 12 five by seven. It's one of my larger packs of paper. I don't need this much paper for this project, but it has the five by sevens in it, which are perfect with the size envelopes that I'm using because that fits on there perfectly without having to modify it. And basically these five by sevens are reduced sizes of some of the eight by 10 sheets. So there's 12 of these in kind of the soft pastel tones with the violets and golden and peach, some blues. So those are all the five by sevens, got those all trimmed and ready to go. Um, and then here's some of the other sheets in it. So you can see these are in my shop. They are at a discount right now. So these are all the kind of dark tones. There's 12 of these. Some of you may already have this paper collection. This is not a new one and this one's been out at least six or more months because it's a 2017 paper. Has some background ones in it. And again, this is called Enchanted. Let me real quick show you. These are some of the more background looking type papers. The others were the florals. And there we go. So, <coughs> so Th these print out onto an eight and a half by 11 sheet. Um, you can use your own home printer to print them onto, I've printed these onto cardstock. You can print them out onto um, paper weight, cardstock weight, whatever weight that you want to do. Um, you can also take them to like Office Depot, Office Max, someplace like that, and have them printed. They all come with uh, permission to you for you to print them for your own use. Um, and then it also has the five by sevens. Um, so um, that's what we'll be doing, uh, using today. So um, 
It's yes, this is the paper we used for the Enchanted Steps album. Alrighty, so what we're gonna start with is we have our um, eight envelopes and we're gonna put them into three pairs of two and two individuals. And we just set the two individuals for aside for the moment. Those are the ones that are gonna attach the whole unit to our covers. And with our pairs, we want to, them to face so that my flaps Oh, dear, Sarah just texted me. She's got a spider in her room. She, she's she's horrified of spiders. And she's terrified. Oh, gosh, that's a big Oh, That's in her bathroom. That's a big spider. So she's wondering who's going to die first. She goes, who will die first, me or the spider? She says, most likely me. Okay, so I may end up having to go take care of a spider. Um so that's that's pretty funny. So <laughs> be warned. <laughs> anyway, all right. So we're gonna pair these so that when they're back to back, the flaps are on the same end. All right. So that gives us our three. These will be the three pages in the middle, and then. We'll, we'll have at each side, these will be the ones um, that will attach the um, pages to the book covers. So um, the next thing I want to do is take out one of my cardstock sheets so that I can cut my binding strips from these. This is going to be somewhat like my stack the deck with, and it uses channel type uh, bindings for it. So I'm going to take whatever the height is of my envelope. That's how, how wide or how long I want my uh, binding strips to be, perhaps just a slightly less than. So if these are seven and a quarter, um, I'm going to cut these strips to be slightly less than um, the seven and a quarter. So seven and a quarter, maybe go like a sixteenth of an inch less, just so they don't hang out o over the ends of the envelopes. So then I'm going to cut each of them and I'm going to need between each. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to need four inch and a quarter. That allows for a quarter inch channel and half inch flanges as I call them or wings. So if I have a total of five, three pages plus my two ends, it's always one less than that. So I need four. If I were doing like four pages plus the two ends, um, you add those up at six, so one less is five. So it's always one less than the total of number of pages as long as you count the two ends as a page. So I need four, so there's my four. I'm then going to score a quarter inch channel down the center of those. So I'm going to score all of them to have a channel down the center. I'm just folding these at the score lines. And then I'll 
goes both ways. All right, so to start assembling these together, I'm going to attach the envelopes to the, um, the strips on each side. So I'm going to start with a pair. You can do this with glue or actually I'm going to do it with, I think, with glue. And in order so that these don't stick out at all, I'm just going to do a slight angle on them. Not a lot, just a little tiny angle. Cup out. Scrubbies in there. Let me just do these all real quick production mode so that they're all good to go. By using glue over uh, adhesive like score tape, it gives you a little bit of flexibility so that you have that half a second if you need to move it. So to start with, I'm going to take one of my end ones and I'm going to attach it to one side here. I'm going to lay it right next to the fold without going over. I sound like a game show host. Closest to the total without going over. If... Now, obviously, if you want to have a little more space between your pages, you just make the channel a little bit wider and that, thus you need to make um, your strips a little bit wider. I'm going with a quarter of an inch. So then I'm going to take one of my pairs. Now I want my flaps both facing each other. So this is going to go on the front side. Touch like that. Now we're going to make four of these pairs just like this. So four pairs onto my four um, binding channels. See by having it glue, I can kind of wiggle it around, get it straight, get it centered, do the next one, so there's two pair, The glue that I am using is um, Scotch Tacky Glue. It's the same as the same formula as their old Scotch Quick Dry that was in a red bottle. They just have eliminated the um, red bottle one, and this is the same stuff, just with a different different um, 
different name in a different bottle, but Scotch has assured me that it is the same stuff. All righty. So now we have our four pairs of envelopes glued down. So now we're ready to attach these together. So I'm going to attach these two together. Now this is where you can decide do I want my pocket to come in from the side or from the top? So I'm going to put glue, if I want it coming from the side, I'm going to put glue in a U-shape. If I want my pocket loading from the top, I'm going to put glue in a U-shape with a U up the side. The U is opening is to the side. For uh, the vertical, the U opening is at the top. So I'm going to do this one. With, you want to stay close to the edge, but you also want a healthy bead, not gushy bead of glue. Not my straightest work, but it'll do. So this first one, it's kind of easier if you just open it up. Line up the edges and stick that down. All right, so then that puts these two spine pieces next to each other and creates a pocket up here at the top. I don't want to stick my finger in there too far and pull the glue apart. This side will be attaching to my front cover. So then close that, take my next pair, do the same thing. I want my pocket at the top. If I wanted to make the middle one a pocket on the side, maybe I put two pockets on the top and one pocket on the side. You could do that if you wanted to. Do I want to do that? Because what I'm thinking is I could do a pocket on the side, pocket on the top, pocket on the side. Next one will be pocket on the top. And then the last one at the back would be pocket at the side. But I kind of like that. Let's go side, top. So this next one, because I'm going to change it up, this one will have <coughs> glue across the top. So this will give me two vertical and three horizontal pockets. That wasn't my prettiest glue job. Line up my edge of my envelopes. Again, those will all line up. So that gives us a pocket up here, pocket here, and my last pair, I'm going to do the pocket at the top again. Now what I, you can uh, attach these to the binding strips with adhesive, but for this part, making these sides, I do always recommend you use glue because these are going to be interactive pockets. If you use an adhesive, when you put your tags down in, they'll get stuck in the adhesive. If you glue them, glue dries and so they won't get stuck. Adhesive stays tacky. When it dries out, it lets go. And if so, if you're using an inexpensive adhesive, you may find your books fall apart after a couple years. Stick that down. Wanted to make sure. Now it's not a great time to check, but I do have both of the top pockets are on the top. And then the side pocket is here on the side. And then when I attach these to my covers, I'll also make those sides. So it'll go side, a top pocket, a side pocket, a top pocket, and a side pocket. So they're alternating. So, so this gives you 
options about pockets. It gives options for size. It gives you options for the number of pages you want to put in. It just gives you a lot of options. So now that I've got this, this part finished, I can now kind of measure how wide my spine area or the spine section is. And it measures one and one eighth inch. So on my spine, I want that to measure one and one eighth inch. If I were doing like I did on this one, so if I'm doing a really narrow book, and this one had a half inch spine, I across the width then scored in um, a half an inch in the width of this, this 12 by 12 in order to get my spine. I'm gonna show you how to make it a doubled spine so that you can splice two pieces together to make it a little bit larger. To determine the size of your cover itself, you need to decide how much you want at the top and the bottom and the side. With this one, I went with 3 eighths of an inch and 3 eighths of an inch. So, and I'll do probably the same sort of thing. So, if this is um, 5 and the envelopes are 5 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter, so for that height, it's seven and a quarter. If I add three quarters of an inch, that's gonna make it eight inches tall. And that sounds reasonable to me. Five and a quarter plus three eighths is going to be five and five eighths. I'm more inclined to go ahead and make it five and three quarters. So I'm gonna make my covers five and three quarters plus, I better write my math down and not trust myself to remember it in my head. So I'm going to go with five and three quarter wide by eight inch tall. And then my spine is one and one eighth. So I'm going to take for this my width plus my spine to determine how wide to cut both my front and back covers. So my width plus my spine is going to be five and three quarters plus one and one eighth. And that is going to be six and seven eighths is what I'm going to cut my, um, my covers. If you want to round that up to just make it seven inches, it's going to add slightly to the width, but not enough to make a huge amount of difference, but it's sure a lot easier math to cut my two covers seven by eight. So I'm going to do that so I can take um, my eight and a half by 11 sheet and cut it to seven inches by eight inches. Also cut the same size out of this sheet. Save that for something else. So that's my seven by eight inches. Now I have to score in my spine on both of these sheets. So I'm going to score at the one and one eighth, if you recall, that was the width we determined our spine needed to be. And this is lightweight chipboard. It's about 0 0.022 with 0 0.025 in thickness. Um, and many times on like, um, when you do sp get spiral bound notebooks or tablets of paper, the width of the chipboard on the back, or the heaviness of that chipboard on the back, that's about what this is. Cereal box weight is about this weight as well. So if you don't have lightweight chipboard, you can use a cereal box. Well, that binding method was, it was, uh, 
made more popular by someone else, so I don't use that one, sorry. Miss New York. So those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, I do have a live, on the live shows like this, I do have a live audience and chat going on. So if you hear me talking to people, I'm, I'm not talking to myself, though I do that often. Um, I am talking to, um, um, to uh, the, the people on the chat. So now I'm going to take and overlap these spine pieces and put those together. So here I am going to go ahead and use my score tape. And we can go ahead and overlap those. So again, I'll do the game show thing close to the folds without going over and attach those two together. So you can see this ends up being a total of 13 plus inches wide, like 13 and an eighth inches wide, so uh, which we wouldn't be able to fit out of a 12 by 12. All right, so that gives me my cover. Now these will be, a, this will then be attaching so that this space Piece will attach to the spine and so since this pocket is going um, opening from this side having that little bit extra um, uh, depth there works perfectly this one will attach on this side before I do that I do want to attach pattern paper to my front and back inside covers so I'll pick the papers that I want to use for that It's going to get covered over for the most part. You can, actually what I might do is the same color of chipboard that I'm using for my binding, I'm going to put in here. Then I can add some accent if I want to do that. This is piece one, two, one, two. So I'm going to use a couple of pieces, pieces of my cardstock rather than my pattern paper since the envelope is going to cover it up almost in its um, entirety. And then I can also run a little strip at the top and the bottom. So let's just get this covered on here first. Come in. I think I'm being brought a beverage. Thank you. I knew it wasn't Trevor. He never knocks. Thank you. Those of you who remember um, my son's friend Chance who lived with us for a couple of months a couple years ago he's over visiting he's getting his his, his doo doo all put to, together as, as we have said so uh, it's good to see him doing so well alright so I'm going to do actually I'm going to take these to the center line so I'm going to do two six and a half inch pieces eight inches I need to put a new blade in the cutter So I can trim off, trim off a little, about a sixteenth inch. I want them to meet in the middle, and if it's not centered, that'll make me crazy. It might not make other people crazy, but it would make me a little bit crazy. So I'm going to trim off just a squidge. All right. So now I'm going to take and put tape on each side of my fold.
Joy, I would call me Nordstrom's, not Walmart. I'm not Walmart, Joy. I'm Nordstrom's, okay? <laughs> So I'm going to just put my score tape because remember my pages are attaching so I want to make sure that this paper is not coming up. <laughs> no, you can call the other. You can still call the other one Kmart. That's okay, Joy. <laughs> I just, you know, want to call myself Nordstrom's and not Walmart. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to peel off this one so I can get it centered on there, and then I can peel off the rest. Line this up along that edge. It's going to line up on the other set pieces too. And then I can go in and peel off all the paper backing on everything. And then this lines up on there. Does it line up there? Okay, so I can line this one up along the center line. Thank you, Joy. Joy is my longtime dear friend and moderator. So she has the power button. So. <laughs> All righty. So if I need to, nope, line, everything lines up. We're all good to go. I can gently fold at those that fold line or that little score in there. That gives me my inside of my book. I'll be covering the outside um, as we get this finished. So there we've got our inside all done. So now we're ready to attach our envelopes to our book. All right, so we're going to do the U shape because we want my front and back to be side loading pockets. So then we're going to start this 
to where this fold here lines up on that edge right there. So I'm going to center it vertically and lay it right next to that fold and then set that down. and attach that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Apply my glue and my glue. Now these spine pieces are not attaching to the spine here. It's going to stay loose. So then we'll pull that so where that's right next to that fold. Pull it nice and tight, stick it down, so that gives me my little book with my pages inside, and they all flip nice, oops, that one came up. I lifted it before it had a chance to stick down, so let's put the glue back on. Should let it sit for a sec before you pick it up, Laura. Okay, so let that hold that down and let it glue for a minute. So, but you can see now, so I have a pocket here, I have a pocket up here, I have a pocket right here pocket up here and a pocket right here. So really quick, so now we have a blank album all good to go. So this spine, you can see that those are loose. This is not rocket science here. So that gives us our pages. So then we're ready to put our cover on. We're ready to cover our pages. This is where it's nice to have these five by sevens ready to go to where we can just attach those on. It's still a pocket over on this side that we can kind of go through and decide, hmm, you know, which one do we want where? How do we want them? Well, like here's kind of a green and a green. So then here, maybe in this middle. Maybe that one goes there. That one goes there so that we've got flowers opposite each other. I like this yellowy one. That goes there. Okay, we have another yellow. Maybe color coordinate by pairs. See, and I'm I'm I left this up too soon because this is coming up again. Gotta let it dry first. I'm I'm trying to rush it along. So that one can go there. Maybe that one there. We can save those for going inside things. So these are ready then to be attached down. Now on these flaps, what we can do with them is we want to sandwich, or what I like to do is I sandwich that flap in between. So I'm not going to be using these, these again, but you can sandwich the sandwich that flap in between. So you make a, um, a flap here, but it sandwiches together. So then I can decide just what width I want to make those. You can also turn those also into a pocket when you attach them. So it could be that I have maybe the blue on the inside and the pattern paper on the outside. 
if I choose to go that route, or I can have with two different pattern papers when I attach these on. But we'll be um, sandwiching this. Now, if you choose, you could go ahead and trim some of this flap off, especially where it is with the, the sticky on there. If I'm sandwiching, I can just go ahead and leave it on there um, in its entirety. If I decided I wanted to make my flaps to be pockets, I may want to go ahead and take um, take at least that, that sticky part off of them. And I can do that by just, maybe I'll just run this at an inch and a half from my fold and I can just trim the adhesive part of the envelope off. So let's go ahead and get this inked up real quickly and attach these and then we'll go through and put on our flap pieces. being really good and I've cut back a lot of my Dr. Pepper but all right let's get that banged up so now when I glue this on I want to glue it around this, but I also want to go around the edge of my envelope. I mean, you could shrink this down and have this being the size of that envelope face, but I want it to be larger. But I don't want is when I go to put my tag inside, I don't want, if I just glue it around the edge, it's going to run into this potentially. So I'm just going to run my glue along the edge of my envelope op opening. Now your envelope may not have that opening. It depends on the envelopes. And I'm running this inside a ways because this is smaller than that envelope. And that gives me my eighth inch reveal that I like to have. Tina, you need to put a new blade in your craft knife then. Poor Jeannie, you have so many difficulties. <laughs> All right, so that gives me those two. Let's still go ahead and trim this. And whoops, I don't miss my cover when I trim this off. Okay. 
probably would have been far easier to go ahead and remove these um, flap adhesives before I attached my envelopes together, but it's working fine. Flip it this way and I can do the rest of them. can get this next pair on there. I'm using vintage photo on these and I'm just knocking off the very edge. I just don't like the white edge. So I'm just touching on the edge with the ink just to kind of give it a finished frame. Well, feel free, Donna, to go ahead and modify it however you wish to. Yeah, I like using dark envelopes. Somebody is commenting on the chat that they like the dark envelopes. I too like that. It gives a nice pop for the color. It's not a race genie, so whatever, however long it takes you to, to get this done. I work a lot slower when I'm working here by myself. When I'm trying to get something completed during the course of the, the class, I do tend to work a little bit faster. Well, I guess I misunderstood what you were saying then, Donna. 